Hey guys, it's me and today I'm here with my series discussion for Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children, The Ransom Wakes, the sixth book series. Well, I recently read the last book in the series, so it's time to do a whole ass discussion. This series was originally three books long, got extended by another three, which are bigger so I can't hold them. Luckily for you, I reread these books pretty recently, I think I reread them two years ago, last year, I don't remember exactly. No, last year, I reread them all last year for the fifth book. So they're all fresh in my memory, it's not like my shadowy series discussion where my memory of the first couple of books were not the best. Yeah, I read these, reread these for recently, and then to read the fifth book and then the sixth book, I read as well. So yeah, most of the series I've read twice, that says already a good thing about this. And yeah, I'm a bit of a jumbled mess in this intro, I apologize. Let's start with, <laughs> with a synopsis for the first book. Yes, this is the movie title edition, don't judge me. We all, we all experience different things. So this series follows Jacob, whose grandfather has always told him stories about this orphanage that he used to live in. And it's like full of kids with like these special superpowers called peculiarities. And because his grandfather was alive during the war, like those stories have always been explained to Jacob as like, hey, this is just your grandfather dealing with his trauma of living during the Second World War as a Jew. No, I don't remember if he was a Jew, he was Polish. But, so, as he grew up, he started to like not believe these stories anymore. And then one day, his grand like Jacob gets a call from his grandfather that he is in danger and Jacob needs to come and help him. And Jacob ends up arriving at the scene very late and sees his grandfather dying and he sees these monsters that are the cause of it. But then, you know, police shows up, gets investigated, and official ruling of his grandfather's death is that it was just wild dogs. So, you know, nothing too serious. And Jacob, you know, sees, like, he thinks things are a bit sketch. So when he, like, they're cleaning up his grandfather's house, he's particularly looking for stuff about this orphanage because he thinks like going to it will like give him the truth if these stories were true or not and his parents go along with it because they're like hey he's dealing with trauma i've seen his grandfather die maybe this will bring him some closure he ends up finding things about the orphanage and the orphanage is in wales and he and his father go to it in wales they find out that this orphanage was bombed during the war so you know it's completely torn down no one is alive anymore but jacob goes to explore the what like the wreck and like just to try and find more information about his grandfather and he ends up finding out that all the stories were true and actually there's like this loop that repeats every single day it happens right before the bombing and these kids with their peculiarities are still alive yeah i know it sounded <laughs> very in-depth and spoilery but i feel out of experience i've tried to explain the series a lot in my lifetime honestly <laughs> you need this much explanation to be able to like fully understand the premise of the series i promise you i didn't spoil shit that's the basic premise of the first book it continues on throughout the rest of the series normally i do a little ranking of the book so i'll definitely do that for you i start my least favorite and work up to my favorite so my least favorite is the third one which is the library of souls why you'll understand in a minute then i have hollow city which is the second book which i have a lot of tabs and surprisingly okay then we have the conference of birds which is book five then on third place i have the desolations of devil's ava which is the sixth and final book in this series then we have miss Peregrine's of philip children at number two this of course is the first book and then on place number one my favorite book in the series is book four a map of days so yeah this is my ranking if you want to know why, stick around for a bit. I'll do individual reviews of these books. And also leave your ranking of the series below if you've read it before. I think that's interesting. And yeah, I also own different edition of these books. So I'm sorry for this look at my uh -huh. Yeah, let's go into the individual reviews. Starting off with book one, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This got five to five stars for me both times I read it, which is gonna be different <laughs> as we go through the series. 
<laughs> you'll hear it i really love this book so much i think this is a great introduction to the series and it does like throw you into this world like very slowly like you bit by bit uncover what is real and what is just like fantasy and there are moments where you are like doubting like is is this like actually a real thing and you just get introduced to it like very slowly and i really like that i like that we weren't like wished into it it just you know <laughs> it takes a bit for jacob and therefore also us as the reader to discover what is going on and i really appreciated that i feel like it made everything just like feel more magical and then oh, the world is so good once you get into like the peculiar world it's fantastic and I, I love it so much that's why i love the series because i love this world so, so much this book still like doesn't really go into like the overall plot of the series that much it's mainly just like an introductory to like the world and it sets up where we're going don't worry so it feels simple i can you could compare this book to like the first three harry potter books where it's like okay we're chilling <laughs> you know before like the calm before the storm and i really like that and i think i don't know I just have like these fond feelings over this book because it is still so simple and not really simple like this complex world and it does really go into that but there was no high stakes war thing going on at like the very end where it like starts to do that most of the thing is just like exploring this world like what it is and discovering all these different peculiarities being introduced to all these different characters where i also adore so much and yeah i think this was just like a very quick and atmospherical read and it's very different from the rest of the series because it is so introductory i guess but it's still fantastic and oh, i love this then we got the second book hollow city which upon first read i get five or five stars and then upon reread i docked the star because i just felt like even though i really love this book if you look at it critically not a lot happens in this book it's mainly the peculiars traveling and like being on the run and you just cover a lot of the world like that's what this book does it's just a lot of not really world building which is like world discovery like discovering different aspects of this world and like just spending more time with these characters and seeing how they react in more like a like bad situation i guess and i i love it so much but like not a whole lot happened to it unless like until like the very end and that's why i had to talk this star <laughs> ultimately but i still really love this book because my favorite thing about the series is the characters and then second to that is the world and this book expands on that so greatly so even though it's like second to last it only is because the rest of the books are just like fantastic but i still really love this book I also even though this book is mainly spelled like discovering the world and like spending time with the characters getting to know them even better this book never felt info dumpy at all which i really liked and also this book like we go into the second world war we spend time doing the war and i really thought that was interesting because not only are characters trying to survive like the danger of their world they're also trying to survive the danger of our world at that time so they're kind of fighting two wars i guess and i thought that was so interesting and it's so well done and i loved seeing how those two things influence each other so yeah i always love it when fantasy worlds like when we have urban fantasies when the events are like set during like important times during our time and they also have something going on and seeing how those two things influence each other i think there's always something so interesting that authors like come up with and i think this book did that really well it also made for this book to feel like very high stakes because we're trying to survive two bats and yeah just really like this book <laughs> then we arrive at library of souls which <laughs> fun story maybe not but when i first read this i read this like an entire month this is the only book i read in that month because it's massive and i also was in a reading slump i have that memory of it so vividly i don't know why but i do and i originally really loved this and i thought it was fantastic ending to the story because this was originally the ending to the story but so i get originally get a 5 stars but upon reread i ducked it to a 3 out of 5 stars because i 
didn't like this i think the first half was just a little bit too slow i do think like once it makes sense this thing where the first half sets up for the second half and then the second half we like do big things like that definitely is a thing he does but i feel like it just didn't pay off in this one i feel like it was just a little bit too slow and especially considering it was like supposed to be a finale i feel like i don't know the first half was just disappointing and it didn't really like do much for me <laughs> i just feel like there could have been seals in here cuts because it was just a little bit too much but i didn't really like the direction this book took the story in because it goes <laughs> It goes really in depth about the villains and explaining why they are the way they are and why it's bad and how exactly it's a threat to the community, to the world. And you know, I really like that and I liked how it ended up being resolved. I think that was really good. I just thought it was a little bit too slow. It also added a bit more of a darker side to this world. Like we've been pretty dark. Like I said, this book mainly takes place during the Second World War. It's, it's not been a breeze, but I don't know, just explaining the villain's motivations more kind of made shit a little bit more darker, if that makes sense. Another vibe I had with this book, which I still don't understand, because as I continue with the rest of the series, it wasn't present anymore, but I didn't like Emma in this book at all. I feel like she made a lot of... I don't know, I feel like she was just very annoying in this book. She... <laughs> it's like, hey! You've been proving wrong time and time again. Why are we still following you? And like, she's still very adamant about following what she wants. And it was just, was annoying. And I still don't get it because I really loved her in the first two books and I still really liked her in the last three. It just, in this book, it just, no, I just, ugh. like, I annotated these books upon we read and I use wet whenever I'm angry, or like, mad at something. And usually that is like solely used for the villains because you know i i don't like them i use it now i can find an example oh wait <laughs> i had one like look at that that that's purely raging at emma because i just i didn't like her in this book and like i said i can't explain it because in the other books it's not a problem and in this one it was so yeah it also hindered a lot of my enjoyment because she is like the secondary main character at least in the original trilogy so she's present a lot so i didn't you know, it bothered me a bit. Yeah, overall, I liked the ending. I just feel like it was a little bit easy at some point, but overall, it was really good. And something I just can't wrap my head around while reading this book is that this was supposed to be the original ending, and there were no plans for this trilogy at all because there were so many hints towards, especially a map of days, like things that set up in that one. It's very much discussed in here, like surrounding like Jacob's grandfather, and I just. I, I don't get it. I don't get how that was not planned at this point. Like, this was just supposed to be it because it weaves in to each other so perfectly. And yeah, talking about a map of days, which I love to do. <laughs> a map of days. Fourth book, my favorite. I gave it five to five stars. I just, I really love this. I really love this the first time I read it. Then upon reread, I was expecting to like it a little bit less, but I still absolutely loved it so much. And this without a doubt my favorite in the series i didn't even have to think about it i think this book goes back to a happy place for a little bit especially like the first half this takes place in america and transports us to modern day so we're in a whole different peculiar world because the system works very differently in america and in the first half we're just seeing where our characters left off after the events of the third book and what they've been up to and then also seeing the peculiars who have only lived in like war times now being introduced into modern America and not knowing anything. And I really loved exploring that with them. And I just, especially because it's also Jacob's perspective who has caught up in modern day America. So he's kind of the same perspective as we has, have. So like seeing them interact with the modern day world through his eyes, which is very entertaining. And I really loved that. And then the second half goes very deep into how the American peculiar world works and what Jacob's grandfather used to do in America and that was so interesting and I really loved it. It again gets a little bit darker but not as dark as these last two books have been. It's kind of like a light point and I really loved it even though a lot happens, like a lot of serious things happen. It's like a breeding point a little bit and I really just love the characters in this book because I feel like they've grown a lot. Like this takes place a while 
I would say like a couple of months, like a year after. I don't remember exactly. But it takes like place after a while after the library, so it's still gonna immediately pick up after it. So these characters have had to sit with the events of the original trilogy already and they've grown from it. And I really liked seeing that growth in these characters. Like it's not like they went through all of these events and it changed them and it didn't change them at all, it changed them a lot. And also a thing I liked a lot is that Miss Peregrine still sees them as the same children she used to have in the first book. And it creates a lot of conflict between them because they're like, hey, we're way more mature than we used to be. Like we went through a lot of shit. Like we wanna be able to like, you know, like we saved the world, we wanna be able to do shit. And Miss Peregrine's like, no, you're children. You're not doing anything. And it creates that conflict that I think is so interesting. And like it doesn't get to a point where Miss Peregrine gets annoying, don't worry. But I don't know, it gives the characters, like the peculiar is a little bit more of autonomy and co like confidence as well in themselves that I really like to like growth. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And this book is the book from the series that kind of cemented Jacob as like one of my new favorite characters of all time because it really just like showed his quote really well and only after this it only gets better so yeah I also wanted to say that okay, so now we're moving into the books I've only read once and that first of all is The Conference of Birds which is the fifth book this is quite a bit shorter than the fourth and the fifth so you know I was kind of, I was kind of expecting this to be a bit of a bridge book and I feel like it kind of is, but not in a way where you're like, oh, this is a bridge book. It definitely sets up, like, goes in deeper into the events of the map of days and then sets up things for the Desolations of Acre. But no, that's like, the Desolations of Devil's Acre. I just kept a word in there. But this is still a very fast paced and entertaining read. And I really liked the direction this book took. It was very unexpected. There was a lot of plot twists in here that just wasn't expected. In the, it was the ending of A Map of Days, a new character gets introduced called Noor, and she gets more developed into this book, and I really love her as well. So I had a great time spending more time with her on this one and getting to know her better. And yeah, this we this went by so quickly. I read this so, so quickly because it just, one event after the other, it is revealing a lot more by Peculiar America and setting up the plot of this new trilogy, I guess. Like really going in depth about that. A lot of reveals are made that are just so good. And then this ends on such a cliffhanger, which I forgot about. <laughs> like it was about a year in between me reading these two books. And I completely forgot about the cliffhanger. And I started the Desolation of Devil's Day because I was like lost for a little bit. But they recap it really well, which I appreciate. That they that recap might feel a little bit repetitive. If you read these back to back, I'm not sure because I didn't do that. But for me, who had a period of time between the two books, I really liked it. And I feel like it was done very naturally. It was naturally integrated into the story. It wasn't just like, oh, we're going to info dump all of what happened in the last book on you right now. That, that wasn't the case. I really appreciated just like the small recap that was woven in very naturally because my memory isn't the best in the world, you know? I thought this was an amazing finale in the series, which I was a little bit scared to read this because I didn't like A Library of Souls upon reread. And that was the original finale. And, you know, I'm like, okay, if that was the way you ended the trilogy, but it was about to be a trilogy, how are you going to end this when it's a six book series? But I wasn't disappointed at all. I really loved this. I flew through this book. I read this in the middle of my reading slump. I'm still in it. So, you know, she should know that. But I read this in two days. And it, this, is, this, this is a big book because I was just so encaptured by it. And there was not a dull moment in this at all, yet it didn't feel rushed. There was a lot of questions that I had going into this book. It was like, there's no way they're all gonna be answered. Like, I was so scared for that, but they were. And, you know, nothing felt like infinity or rushed. Everything just like felt fleshed out the way it was supposed to. I was also just on the edge of my seat towards the entire book. There's a lot of action in this book, but I feel like there was a lot of like small character moments in between everything that made, I don't know, that. I really appreciate it because I love these characters so much and just give me the time to just like appreciate these characters and the way they've grown from the first book but you know there were just like nice small beautiful moments in between like the big action moments and I don't know it kept pacing very nice and yeah the ending was fantastic and I'm talking about the way they wrapped up like this conflict and then also just like the future they set up for these characters because they don't exactly tell you like hey this is how they spent their entire lives, it's not really that big of like a flash forward, like 20 years into the future or anything. But you do like, 
set up like a little situation but like it leaves you very easily to imagine how you're gonna spend the rest of their lives and it, oh, it was everything <laughs> that made me cry happy tears because it was just it was so good it truly we also tried this entire series jacob has like this conflict between like the real world and the peculiar world and which one he belongs in and i feel like that ending just i don't know gave the perfect answer for that and oh, i just i loved it so much so yeah and it leaves just all of our characters in a beautiful place that i really appreciate it's not just a great ending for jacob it's a great ending for all of them and oh, i just I love this series so much, man. So, I don't mean all the individual reviews. Let's go into the overall thoughts of this series. I guess it wasn't obvious. I adore this world. I think Ransom makes it a great job at crafting this world and also expanding in it with each and every book. Like, I don't know. It's so, it's such a complex world. And if when you got introduced to it in the first book, it's like, oh, okay, this is easy. You know, they have peculiar powers in a loop. They spend the same day over and over again. There's like these evil creatures that can kill them great we gotta get rid of the creatures but then you get more and more into this world and into the politics of it and it's so complex but still so easy to grasp like it was never a moment that i was just like confused about what was going on it is i don't know i really love this world so much and the way it expands with every book it doesn't just feel like oh where were you the entire rest of this series so everything makes sense and gets revealed like the perfect moment and oh i love it so much and then of course the characters Yes, <laughs> I would like to marry every single one of them. No, I won't because they're all children, but I <laughs> adore them so much. Oh, they, I feel like especially with like the Peculiars, they did a very great job at kind of, like Ransom did a very good job at having the dynamic of like, yeah, they're like very old actually, like they're in their 60s, I believe, even older in their 80s. I don't remember, I can count, they're old. <laughs> but they're also children who have been stuck in children's bodies all these years and are we living like the same day over and over again and are in this sheltered place so they won't behave like adults but they also won't exactly behave like children and kind of like in this in-between state which i thought was very interesting and especially as they got thrown out of this loop and into the more of the real world and get to experience and aren't as sheltered anymore and they experience like big things i see those characters grow and mature but like in a different way I guess, and some other characters would. I don't know. And I think I thought that was very interesting. And then Jacob is also such an interesting character. And especially the thing I love about Jacob is when we get introduced to all the peculiars, like they know their powers. They've like been living with their powers for like, what did I just say, 60, 80 years? So like, they know this shit. They have them fully on the grass. But when Jacob, when we get introduced to him, he doesn't have anything. Then throughout the series, we see him discover his peculiarity more and more. And it grows and he learns things about his powers every single book and he struggles with it and he doesn't really get the time to train it and it creates very complicated problems throughout the series because his power is very important and there are times where he just like doesn't know fully how to control it because like he hasn't had the time to train it or like properly develop it and it isn't a peculiarity it's very common so like other people also can't help him and I really liked it because I feel like in fantasy, especially YA fantasy, a lot of the times when our main character gets like a new power, you do like a training montage and like the best ever and I don't like that. <laughs> I really liked seeing like, hey, I don't have time to train. Nobody knows how to train me. So, you know, I'm just gonna fuck up in the middle of battle because I don't know how to do this shit. And I thought that was very realistic and I really liked how it was done. And even in like the later books, that's still an issue is dealing with it he's still discovering new parts of that peculiarity and i just i really love it then of course with great characters come great friendships like the core of the series is just like the friendship between these characters i think it's so well done like they're they all have different dynamics all interact with each other very differently but they love each other and relentlessly so much and oh, i just i love it so much i also really love the plot of the series when you started in the first book, and then I'll tell you the ending of the last one, you're like, how the fuck did we get there? Because how the fuck did we get there? But we got there. It took six books, but we got there. And it's just, it all flows so naturally. There's some great plot twists in there as well. And I don't know, I just, I really love this. I think this is so well crafted. And the series got talked about a lot for like the pictures that I'm including in the series, which I haven't talked about because I think that it's just like an added bonus. 
to the series. I feel like even if you take those pictures out, this is still like such an amazing series. But the pictures do help like create this world and pretty view more into like this atmosphere and be able to like visualize those even better. And I don't know, I just, I really liked it. I think it's a great addition to it. There's also a lot of different settings in this series because we do go to different loops. So we go into like different timelines and different countries. And there's a lot of, var var <laughs> there's a lot of variety in what, where we are, not only in time, but also in space. And I really, really like that. I don't know, I just think it's such an interesting way to discover the world, I guess. And then, yeah, like I said before, the first half of each book always does a lot of setup, and then the second half really does the impact, and it makes up for it. Like, you need the, you need the world building and the character building in the first half to be able to feel the impact of the events at the end of the book. And almost always, except the third book, it's the only one that does that helps it have the second half that just makes up for the setup and like the first one. And, oh, <laughs> and I think it's so amazingly done and I really liked it. So yeah, <laughs> those are my thoughts on the Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children series by Rats and Wicks. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these books. If you've read them, you can go into spoiler details, just leave a little spoiler warning at the top of your comments so people who haven't read the series yet know not to read your comments. And yeah, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>